This is Valley News Live at 10. And we're following breaking news out of Moorhead tonight where police are investigating a stabbing that sent one woman to the hospital with serious injuries. It happened around 2.30 this afternoon at 1202 34th Avenue. Authorities say a woman had been stabbed many times. No word on how she's doing, but we're told her wounds appear to be non-life threatening. Police also say they found the suspect a short time later. He was taken to the hospital for self-inflicted wounds. Police are investigating, but say there's no threat to the public. We're learning more tonight about the deadly rollover crash out of Grand Forks yesterday. Three people are dead and several more are seriously hurt. Authorities say it happened just after noon at 5th Street and Demers Avenue. 21-year-old Janessa Kelly of Crookston was driving a 2011 Buick along Demers when she struck two vehicles before hitting a van and rolling her car. The two women in the van were killed instantly. Their names are on your screen now. Kelly was taken to the hospital where she later died of her injuries. Authorities say the vehicle Kelly was driving had recently been involved in a hit and run in East Grand Forks. They also say alcohol may have played a role in the crash. If you have any information, police are asking that you call them at the number that's on your screen now. That's 701-787-8000. Two people were taken to the hospital today after crashing into a power pole in Fargo. It happened around 1 this afternoon at the intersection of 1st Avenue South and 14th Street. The crash caused power outages in the area and the driver was cited. A North Dakota man is among the other 68 arrested in D.C. following Wednesday's events at the Capitol. 57-year-old Timothy Osford of Cavalier was arrested on a curfew violation less than a mile from the Capitol early Thursday morning. Governors on both sides of the rivers are loosening restrictions on restaurants and bars, including Minnesota, who will open for dine-in starting tomorrow. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard tells us if businesses are participating. Minnesota bars and restaurants hard at work, prepping for Monday as Governor Walls gives the green light for indoor dining at 50% capacity. We're hopeful to get back to business and that we don't have to go through anything like this again. Kathy Teft, general manager at Mix Office and J.C. Chemleys in Moorhead, says she's ready to open doors for dining. Excited to see regulars while offering up dollar taps. Beer cheaper than gas. 50% capacity and following all the same But not all businesses on both sides of the river are participating. We're doing a pretty good takeout business. Blackbird Woodfire Pizza in Fargo holding off on dine-in service. Amid North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum easing restrictions from 50 to 65 percent capacity. So I feel bad on one hand because I know people want to come in and eat. And it's, you know, it's good business. It's about more than that. Many trying to do their part while hoping for more good news to come. In the FM area, Callie Hubbard, Valley News Live. On the Minnesota side, bar service will be allowed to resume with customers in groups of two. People will be able to order at the bar, but they'll have to go back to their tables. Service will end at 10 p.m. The North Dakota Department of Health is reporting no new COVID-related deaths in the state for a second day in a row. They're also reporting a decline in hospitalizations. 93 new cases were reported in the state today. The next phase of vaccinations is expected to start before the end of this month. It includes the elderly. State health leaders say they have no plan. They have a plan to pinpoint who should be next. It's not going to be perfect. We have estimates by county. Um, some of the estimates are down to facility level for how many doses are needed. Says they're also looking at data from previous flu vaccine seasons to try and estimate the amount of elderly people who will want to get the COVID vaccine. A warning tonight after a Horace man caught this on his ring camera. He wants to warn neighbors about what he thinks is a coyote in the area. This video is from early this morning on Chestnut Drive, just northwest of the elementary school. The Surris Valley Animal Shelter is asking for help. Their cat waiting list jumped from 3 to 63 in just the last few days. So far, they only have 10 fosters signed up. We can only do this with the help of our community and with people signing up to foster. Um, so like I said, we would love to get those 60 cats off our wait list ASAP, and we can only do that um, with our community's help. Also, renovations are expected to be finished this summer at the shelter. 
How sweet is this? You're watching video of a surprise birthday parade for a Fargo three-year-old. Tommy and his family are in quarantine, but they say they still wanted to make his day special. They called the Fargo police and the Fargo Fire Department, who delivered in a big way. Looser restrictions across the river in Minnesota. It's bringing back some old-time favorites. John Nordson reports for WCCO News. I was pleasantly surprised. As owner of Heights Theater in Columbia Heights, Tom Lentness wasn't expecting to have restrictions loosened quite yet. Now he's getting ready to welcome moviegoers back to his 95-year-old theater. With the new rules, he could have up to 70 mask-wearing customers inside. You can sit together if you're with someone and you have not been socially distancing yourself, but our goal is that if you do not know anyone, we want to make sure that you are socially distanced from them. Before the latest shutdown, Letna says his theater was doing well by playing classic movies, since there's a shortage of new releases. If COVID numbers improve, he's hoping to get things back to where they were in 2019, which was a blockbuster year for business. The truth is people do want to go out. They do want to go out and they want to be with other people. So it's kind of like why you can cook at home but you go out to restaurants. Well, Heights Theater says they'll open in a few weeks. St. Anthony Main Theater here in Minneapolis says they'll wait a few months for new movies to come out. Received many posts on Facebook, many messages of people saying, hey, we can't wait until you reopen, but we're glad that you're still closed. You know, they want it to be safe. Elliot Schofield is the general manager at St. Anthony Main, which has five screens. He says they're at the mercy of Hollywood, hoping that the film industry will give theaters first dibs when they reopen and avoid releasing movies directly to streaming services. He says that's a ticket both sides have to buy into. We, the movie theater industry, we generate their revenue for them. I mean, they're not going to make nearly as much money with streaming services, you know, $10 a month or whatever it's going to be with new releases. So they kind of need us. John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. Later on Valley News Live at 10, a warning for those of you getting out on the ice. But first, we'll take a look at your weather with summer.